G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, today we're going to do something a bit different. We're going to look at a, a kit for a, a model steam engine. Now, I've never, I've never built up a kit from a model steam engine before, so it's something new for me. And I'm interested to see what you get, you know, how well it's made, how it goes together, what's involved. I've made plenty of steam engines and sterling engines and a few flame liquors over the years and you know they've mostly run and I know that it's a bit of a daunting proposition to make up an engine from scratch particularly if you've never done it before and even though a lot of my viewers have got metal lathes a lot don't have metal lathes and the ones that do have metal lathes I'm sure some of them uh, a bit hesitant to go down the model making path because yeah, it requires a fair bit of skill you know, tolerances have to be spot on and there's always the uh, chance of failure <laughs> occurring as you do more of that of course fail, you get hardened to it so you know you learn that failure is not an issue, it's just something that happens but with a kit supposedly that shouldn't happen. Now, in addition to that, I know a lot of viewers have got, you know, kids out there. And I think building up something like this, you know, father and son sort of thing, would be a good bond bonding exercise. And yeah, even if uh, you don't want to do that, you know, dad can do his own thing and the lad could do it as well. You know, it's, it gives you that opportunity. So, okay. Let's get into it. Let's open it up and see what we've got. Now this product was uh, sent to me by Engine DIY Shop. It's based in uh, China. I think it's Hong Kong. And the kit we're looking at is called the Engimore Retro Steam Kit with spherical boiler and additional load. It's about 40 parts. It's very well packaged and uh, suffered no damage at all. And let's see what, what, what we get. Hmm, looks interesting. Oh, it's a box in a box. Okay. Okay. Okay, so here, let's look at the instructions. Now, here's the finished article. Here's the working principle, the mechanics of it all. And parts, side A. Whoops, and side B. So there are all the bits. And then you start off it's numbered from one, two, three, four, five, four. And you work your way through it, just assemble it in the order that they show it. You get the little uh, Allen keys with it, I think. And the boiler. Hooking it up. And it even tells you when to stop. So needs a little burner and then uh, yeah run okay tells you what to do yeah pretty cool eh wow gee it looks nice doesn't it look at that 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 looks beautiful that looks really really nice yeah yeah wow I love it when you get nicely machined stuff and that looks to be really beautifully done, doesn't it? Mmm. What have we got here? Here's, here's the crankshaft and 
linkages and wow this is cool this is cool so we've got that tray what else we get get it out carefully yeah that comes out and then we've got hold on here's the little allen keys you've got bearings and seals risers little wrench oh yeah got a toolkit and brass fittings and little burner so wow this looks really really interesting i can't wait to get this together so let's get on with it Always put your screws in loose to begin with, that way they'll all line up nicely. Don't pull one down first, just get them all in position and then you can tighten them up after you've got them in place.
it's a bit better. Now, whenever you do these sort of jobs, always pays you to use plenty of small containers to put your bits in. Just undo them as you need them. And in this case, I'm just using some Vegemite lids of Vegemite jars. And that's just a herring tin, you know, those pull top herring tins. You just run a can opener around it and just take the edge off. And they make great little parts trays, you know. So you can keep all your parts organised, won't lose stuff, and yeah, work on a soft surface like this. Although I do this mainly for filming too, so we don't get too much uh, darkness. But uh, yeah. Okay, moving on. Good. Hmm, that was a bit tricky. What have we got there? Well, we're nearly there. We're just a matter of add the blow off valve filler plug to the boiler. That's a little seal. That's where you put in your distilled water. Then we add the, the little chimney come whistle. That's removable, so if you don't want whistle, well, I'm pretty sure it's a whistle. But anyway, if you don't want it whistling, you can take it off. That just sits on there. And there's a little aluminium spatula here that you can uh, move the uh, the metho pot around with. So the metho pot just sits on it, but as you can see, it's got a magnet in the base. Pretty cl pretty pretty clever that. That's good. That's a smart idea. So yeah, I might incorporate that in uh, some that I build. It uh, stops it vibrating around, you know. So now it's just a matter of add some methylated spirits or denatured alcohol, whatever you want to call it, in the pot, add the water, and I'll also add a little bit of um, air tool or soluble oil that will help lubricate the piston. And then of course we have to lubricate all the moving parts as well with some fine machine oil, so we'll do that as well. So yeah, it's just a matter of getting it set up now. and. Fire it up and see how she goes. <laughs> Can't wait. It should be good. I mean, it looks awesome, doesn't it? It looks fantastic. It's got a bit of Heath Robinson about it, you know. It, I like the quirky looking e engines and things. And Yeah, this is really good. Really good. The only thing I got caught out on the whole assembly that was all pretty straightforward was having the nut on the each long bolt for the three risers, there's two at that end and one at this end. You have to have that nut on there, even though you think it would just screw up in place of a nut, but no, the nut's got to be there. That's why the, they've made those bolts longer, and yeah, I got caught out on that, and I had to ask for help <laughs> on that to see, you know, where I'd gone wrong, and uh, yep, they were real good, and we sorted out pretty quick. Okay, let's get it going.
nice, it's starting to get steam up. She's nearly ready. Ah. <laughs> Look at that. That's fantastic. Oh, that was so quick. I mean, it's incredible. Look at it go. Wow. Really motors, isn't it? Well, the whistle's not doing anything, so maybe it's not a whistle. It certainly spins over pretty fast. We reduce the heat. Slow it down a bit. Yeah. It's an amazing little engine. It's really fantastic. How much power has it got? Oh, it's quite powerful. It really is. Yeah. Got some go. You could drive something off that, no problem. Well, they've got to drive pulley on it, you know. Awesome. Super good. Well, there you have it. What more can I say? It's just, wow. So, if you think you'd want one of these, and they're not that expensive, you know, look at the um, website, go to the uh, engine do yourself shop and have a look. And you can see whatever the prices are in your neck of the woods, your area of the world. In Australia, they're about $200 Australian. And I'll also put the uh, link to the product itself, this particular engine kit with it, so they'll both be in the video description and on top of that I'll also put in there a code that I've uh, got and the code is XYNUDU, X-Y-N-U-D-U -U. you use that code anywhere on the engine do-it-yourself shop site and you get 10% off so that's a pretty good deal, good offer by them. Yeah, um, I'm blown away by this. I reckon it looks fantastic. And it's a lot of fun putting it together. Yep, can't recommend it highly enough. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Cheers.